the TPLO procedure will require different instrumentation based on the size of the patient. For patients ranging from 3 to 12 kilograms, the 2.0 and 2.4 TPLO system will be used with implants made of titanium. For patients ranging from 13 to 17 kilograms, the 2.7 TPLO system will be used. Along with the other sizes, the implants are designed to have a better anatomic fit. For patients ranging from 18 to 55 kilograms, the 3.5 TPLO system will be used. This system includes small, standard, and broad sizes. For patients ranging 56 kilograms and above, the 4.5 TPLO system will be used. This will help to eliminate double plating. To perform a TPLO, first find the tibial plateau angle to determine the degree of rotation and the appropriate size saw blade to perform the osteotomy. A tibial plateau leveling osteotomy, or TPLO, can be performed with or without a standard jig, but an appropriate size saw blade is required. Make a standard medial approach to the proximal tibia and identify the MCL. Place a jig pin 3 to 4 millimeters below the tibial plateau, distal to the joint surface, and caudal to the MCL. The jig pin should be inserted parallel to the articular surface and frontal plane of the tibia and perpendicular to the sagittal plane. Place a second jig pin through the distal jig pin hole in the arm of the jig. The jig pin should be inserted parallel to the proximal jig pin and centered in the tibia. Tighten both jig pin screws and cut the proximal jig pin, allowing 6 to 8 millimeters above the jig. Score the bone with the appropriate size saw blade, determined from preoperative planning. Place a mark on the proximal bone fragment near the edge of the osteotomy. This mark should be located cranial to the midpoint of the osteotomy. Make a second mark on the proximal bone fragment at the proper distance from the first mark determined from the preoperative planning. This distance should be determined from a TPLO rotation reference chart. This mark should go across the score line to the distal bone fragment. Perform the tibial plateau osteotomy using the original score mark. Insert a K-wire rotational pin into the proximal bone fragment through the far cortex at an oblique angle above the level of the patellar tendon insertion. Aim the pin to avoid the articular surface and osteotomy below the jig pin. Rotate the proximal bone fragment until the marks align and secure the proximal bone fragment in its rotated position using a K-wire through the tibial tuberosity. Remove the rotational pin. To properly align the TPLO plate, use the locking plate holder to place the proximal screw holes in the center of the proximal fragment. Place the distal portion of the plate in the center of the distal fragment and align the laser lines with the osteotomy. After placing the plate in the center of the proximal fragment, insert the proximal K-wire. After aligning the plate with the tibial diaphysis, insert the distal K-wire to secure the plate. Use the appropriate size drill guide and appropriate drill bit to create a hole in the compression position. Insert a non-locking cortical screw in an eccentric position to allow for compression. This screw should be left slightly loose but in contact with the plate. Screw the locking drill guide into the first proximal hole and drill the hole. Measure its depth to the appropriate length. Alternatively, the traditional depth gauge included in the instrumentation set may be used. Place locking screws in the proximal fragment, ensuring not to lock the screw under power. Repeat steps for the second proximal hole. After removing the distal K-wire, Tighten the compression screw by hand. After tightening the compression screw, insert locking screws in the remaining holes. Starting with the most distal locking screw, manually tighten each screw with a screwdriver. Remove the jig and the remaining K-wires. An internal brace ligament augmentation may be necessary if the limb of the dog feels unstable after performing the TPLO. To perform the internal brace ligament augmentation, expose the caudal aspect of the lateral femoral condyle. 
Drill a hole for the appropriate anchor using the appropriate size drill bit and guide. After exposing the tibial tunnel starting point behind the long digital extensor LDE groove, place the tip of the aiming guide in the suture hole of the plate and push the drill guide sleeve down to the tibial surface. Drill the appropriately sized K-wire for the tibial tunnel, lateral to medial, making sure the K-wire exits near the open hole in the TPLO plate. Remove the drill guide after properly placing the K-wire. After placing the appropriately sized K-wire, use the appropriately sized cannulated drill bit to create the tunnel. Loop the suture material through the suture hole on the TPLO plate and shuttle both ends through the tibial tunnel using the nitinol suture passer. Pull both limbs of the suture material taut and lay over the pre-drilled hole and femur. Use a pen to mark the location of the center of the hole on the suture. Slide the anchor eyelet over the mark. Pull both limbs of the suture material up the shaft of the anchor and mark the location of the laser line on the suture. Move the eyelet to the new mark on the suture material and advance the anchor and suture into the tunnel. If necessary, Use a mallet to advance the eyelet into the tunnel until the tip of the anchor is at the entrance to the femoral hole. If the joint is secure, advance the anchor fully into the tunnel. Remove the driver from the anchor in the appropriate manner. Cut excess suture flush at the anchor.